Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at finding the roots of a quadratic equation. I want to look at the problem, find the roots of the equation x squared plus 8x minus 2 equals 0 using the quadratic formula. So we need to look at this general quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. To find the roots or the x values that make this left hand side equal 0, we need to use the quadratic formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now this equation is really complicated so if you're first learning this I advise making a table on the side with your a, b, and c values. The way that we would find these a, b, and c values if we're looking at x squared plus 8x minus 2 equals 0 is we look for the coefficients in front of each term. For instance, we're looking at the coefficient of the x squared term to find the corresponding a value. And if there's no number written there, it's implied to be a 1 because 1 times x squared is equal to x squared. So the, a, the coefficient in front of the x squared term in this case gives us a equals 1. Now we move over to the b term. What term is in front of the, the x piece? Well, in this case we have b equals 8. And finally, we look for C, which is the constant term. The, co the constant term in this case is going to be negative 2. So now that we have these three values, A, B, and C, we could go ahead and use the quadratic formula to find the roots of this quadratic equation. So we're looking at X equals negative B. And I'm going to write it in parentheses to make the substitution easier when we get to it. So you have negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. So now what we need to do is we need to substitute a equals 1. So whenever we see an a we're just going to replace it with 1. So we have 2 times 1 in the denominator and on this piece here, this 4ac piece, we're replacing the a with 1. Next we can look at b equals 8 and we're going to replace every b with a positive 8. So there's a, a b term here, we're going to replace this with 8, and we can replace this term here also with 8. Next we just go ahead and plug in the last term for c. So we have c equals negative 2, so we just look for the only c on this formula, and we replace it with negative 2. Now we need to evaluate, or uh, in other words we need to simplify this. So we have x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared is 64 minus 4 times 1 times negative 2. Well, 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So now we have 64 minus negative 8 all divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. But now we need to simplify what's underneath this radical. We have 64 minus a negative 8. So this is going to turn into an addition problem. So now we have 64 plus 8. So on the next line, we could write negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 plus 8 is 72. And remember, all divided by 2. So now on the next line, this is where simplifying radicals is going to come in. We need to evaluate the square root of 72. We need to factor it into two pieces, one of which is a perfect square. That's how we work with simplifying radicals. So we have x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 72. Well, when we factor and simplify a radical, we want to find the biggest perfect square factor we could find. So in this case, we could use the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. This is the, uh, the greatest common, I'm sorry, this is the greatest factor we could find that's a perfect square, divided by 2. So now for the next line to simplify further, we have x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 36 is 6, so 6 radical 2 divided by 2. And now for the next line to simplify this, I want to break this into two fractions. So we're looking at negative 8 divided by 2 plus or minus 6 radical 2 over 2 we could break this apart into two fractions. And now we have x equals 
negative 8 divided by, or negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So negative 4 plus or minus, and now how is this going to simplify? Well, if this was, if this simplified to 4, this is going to simplify 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have negative 4 plus or minus 3 radical 2. So this is one acceptable form of the answer, but if they wanted both roots written explicitly, we would have the first solution would be x equals negative 4 plus 3 radical 2, and x equals negative 4 minus 3 radical 2. Now the benefits of using this quadratic formula is look at this example. We have irrational roots because the square root of 2 is irrational. So we wouldn't be able to use factoring by grouping. We wouldn't be able to use other fast methods to factor this. So the quadratic formula is a really powerful tool for factoring and finding the roots of any quadratic equation. Okay, well this is going to conclude this problem as well as this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that it was helpful.